Welcome back to the show, everyone. Excited to get into today's topic. It is an important one. It's around a sensitive issue that we should be discussing, though, that we shouldn't be shying away from, and that is because so many women and children need this information. What I want to share with you is not a recent study either. It's not like this just came about last month. We've known about this now for five years definitively, and previous to that, there were additional studies as well. So you might ask yourself, why are OBs and why are doctors not sharing this more with pregnant women? And the answer is, I don't know, but they should be. We're always looking for what is the specific silver bullet that could lead to attention deficit, hyperactivity based disorder, ADD, ADHD, or autism, or both. And although I don't believe that it's any one thing in particular, a lot of people will say, well, it's just more diagnosis. I don't see that to be the truth at all. The research that I'm looking at does not say it's just being diagnosed more. It says that there is absolutely an incline. Sure, there can be more diagnosis. I'm not going to dispute that. But what we can't overlook is the level and rise in toxins in the environment, as well as other factors that could be leading to potentially a link with autism and attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. So I want to share with you one more. I know that I shared one about two months ago that was as we see a rise in environmental mercury. So as more mercury is released into an environment, a city, a state, etc., there is a rise in autism and autism spectrum based disorders. That's proven. That, that is literally proven. I have a previous podcast on that. I'm going to link that up today at Stephen Cabral dot com slash 3014. So stephencabral.com slash 3014. And also today's study will be linked up as well. This one is out of the JAMA Psychiatry Journal, one of the most prestigious medical journals in the world, literally the world. This uh, was done not quite five years ago, but close. And it's called the Association of Cord Plasma Biomarkers of In Utero, in utero Acenaminophen ex Exposure. I'll explain this in just a moment. With risk of attention deficit hyperactivity disorder and autism spectrum disorder in childhood. So basically what it's looking at is a mother, an expectant mother, will take Tylenol or acetaminophen. And then that will then be absorbed into her bloodstream, which will be processed through her liver. It will be in the fetal cord, the umbilical cord or the fetal cord blood going to that unborn child. And so there will be exposure. And the study set out to say, are there any harmful effects from that? And here's what it found. So it looked at almost 1,000. The cohort was almost 1,000 uh, mother infant dyads at Boston birth cohort. So Boston-based uh, study here. And so basically almost 1,000 mothers, 996 to be uh, specific. And what it measured was simply acetaminophen in fetal cord blood. And here's what they found, because this is pretty remarkable. So the final sample included about 257 children, about 28, which is 25.8% of the study. Uh, and what was the average age? About 9.8 years old. And then it started just to look at this particular cohort. Um, and here's what it found. About, let's see here, 6.6% with autism spectrum disorder only, 4.2% had ADHD and ASD, and let's, then there were other neurological-based issues here. Here's what it found, though. This is, this is the most, I would say, the most interesting, and this was the most telling to the researchers. There's something called uh, a second tertile and a third tertile, and it basically just means that the more exposure to acetaminophen a mother had or less detoxification, I guess you could say, of acetaminophen before it made its way to the unborn child, the greater ADD, ADHD, and autism was. So it is absolutely dose dependent. There was a specific link between the two, and it even goes on to say, beyond its conclusions and relevance, basically just said cord biomarkers of fetal exposure to acetaminophen were associated with significantly increased risk of childhood ADHD and ASD in dose response fashion. That just means the more acetaminophen you took, the greater the chance there was. Now, here's where it goes into the specific things that they found. So previous studies in animals and humans have found an association between prenatal acetaminophen exposure and increased risks of adverse childhood outcomes, including asthma, 
uh, neurodevelopmental disorders, ADHD, ADD, and autism spectrum disorder. And it went on to say that that is because acetaminophen toxicity in cortical neurons, and it can inhibit essentially fetal testosterone production, which could disrupt brain development. In addition, the therapeutic effect of acetaminophen can selectively inhibit certain cytokines. It can affect uh, multiple brain functions, including long-term potentiation, spatial learning, and cerebral development. Now, although the study does obviously quote a lot in terms of brain development, what I also want to share with you is this, and it, this is something that my colleagues and I have at least explored because in my opinion, and, and again, I know it's like this for all doctors, but I'm not necessarily always sure that medical doctors are open to thinking outside the box and for other possibilities. And they just always say, well, in pharmaceuticals, we trust. That's just the way that it is, right? And so what I like to say is, you know, I'm not against making a recommendation that's going to help save anyone's life and, and help them feel better. That's not it at all. But I also want to say, is there a potential downside? Is there a potential risk? And clearly there is an acetaminophen. And so here's one thing though. Acetaminophen also downregulates glutathione production in the liver. So this matters. If a woman is pregnant and she's taking acetaminophen, could that downregulate her body's ability to remove a lot of environmental toxins that she's exposed to? Parabens, um, let's say different types of benzenes in water or the environment, formaldehydes, chlorine, fluoride, you name it, right? 100 plus thousand man made chemicals. That's a possibility. Or what if this acetaminophen gets into the unborn baby and that? child is not able to then produce as much glutathione. Is it possible then that those toxins that they are exposed to uh, in utero before they're born and after may affect them to a greater degree? Meaning what if they're exposed to other toxins? Just think about other toxins that children would be exposed to. And if their glutathione production wasn't as strong would those toxins then harm them more than other children, especially if there are other genetic predispositions as well? I think this is worth exploring because I think that ADD, ADHD, autism, I think executive function disorder, any names that we want to give, we can give. But let's just say that there are multiple neurological imbalances that we're looking at. And we're trying to say is, how can we help children? How can we help all people? And if it's not one thing in particular, let's look at at least a category. The category could be specifically toxicity, gut toxicity, neurological toxicity, brain toxicity, environmental toxicity. Okay, what's with the onslaught of toxins? That's the environment. But why aren't certain children able to deal with these toxins when other children can or babies? So this is something I think is important. This is something I'm interested in exploring. I want to open open this up to our greater community, allow for discussion, which I think is important, and also allow for sharing of ideas. But probably most of all, if our doctors, medical doctors, are not going to share this information uh, with mothers, I think it's important that the greater health community get the information out through podcasts, through videos, etc. I've personally already had multiple strikes now on a certain video channel that we all know about from saying anything that's controversial. I literally quote the research. I link to the research. So this JAMA Psychiatry Journal, which has been out for years now, I will link up at stephencabral.com slash 3014 so everybody can look at it. But that doesn't stop mainstream media from necessarily striking my account or striking others. So really the best thing that we can do is not trying to fault anyone. I mean, the, the medications, the toxins, they're going to be there. But how can we better share this information? That's really what it's about. And so my recommendation is that, of course, only as needed under, under you know, specific circumstances that a uh, expecting mother might need to use an acetaminophen or something like an ibuprofen, et cetera, that could potentially have long-term consequences. This is important for us to be able to think about. It's important for us to be able to share. And whenever possible, we want to do this pre-conception. So our goal in a natural-based practice is to always test for heavy metals, 
It's to test for gut-based dysfunction, high omega-6s to omega-3s, high cortisol levels, low thyroid, and anything that could cause inflammation or neurological damage in an unborn child. So that's always our goal in a natural practice. Um, you can run this lab, or any woman can run these labs right at home. They're called the Big Five Labs, or a less expensive version, instead of running five of these labs, which are hormones and thyroid, all of those, and cortisol, food sensitivity, omega-6, omega-3 inflammation, uh, minerals and heavy metals, and then the last one being gut testing with a candida metabolic and vitamins test. They can run a dual pack. So they can run what's called a starter kit uh, or a vitamin tox test. And that's going to be for the vitamin levels, mineral levels, which are obviously very important, methylation-based markers. Uh, but they're going to look at heavy metals and gut function. So we urge this because if there are already underlying imbalances uh, in an expecting mother, things could potentially have more inflammation or, or a worse outcome. So our goal is to say, can we find these things ahead of time? Great. Let's fix them for the mom. The mom will be more in the know, more knowledgeable, and then the likelihood then for imbalances will be less. And that's always the goal. So hopefully this was helpful. I'm going to link up those labs at stephencabral.com slash 3014. And of course, you can always find them just at stephencabral.com. You can go over to labs. You can find that. It'll just send you right over to Equal Life. But that's our goal. Our goal is to help women, children, people all over the world through natural based methodologies and more than anything to share natural health based advice that I think that we could all use. Again, if it's not just for you, pass it on to someone that you believe it could serve. Take care, everybody. Have an amazing rest of the day. I'll be back tomorrow with a brand new Cabral concept. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.